Yo, yo. <laughs> I actually uh, have the Art Bro stuff up, but this is actually a Cup of Joe stream on Sunday. What's up, everybody? What's going on, Jake? Not much, man. Thanks for having me this early in the morning. <laughs> yeah, it's usually a... Um, it's usually just me rambling for 10 minutes before I get my thoughts going. And so right. Today, we'll have to ramp up in a different way, I guess. No, you're um, all good. I'm surprised Zayden's coffee. here with you. Oh, yeah. Zayden sometimes um, pops in. Sometimes it's somebody else. Um, with the morning stuff, the, the Cup of Joe stream, I usually just don't, uh, you know, do too much for it. I, it's really just to jump on, draw a little bit. Whoever comes, comes. Whoever, you know, is able to chill with us. Sounds just, good. You know. But yeah, you know, I'm gonna switch the the logo here to <laughs> off of Art Bros, um, and even the color I'm, it's bothering me now that I've switched the logo. <laughs> All right, so um, I've got like two different pieces of work, uh, pieces of art to do. Uh, cool. But I figured we'd chill. Uh, you drink coffee? Or are you a cup of Joe kind of guy? Or you? I did. I actually had my cup of Joe so I could wake up and actually, you know, present myself on your show. <laughs> <laughs> Got you. Yeah, I'm usually <laughs> today. I'm a little behind. I'm usually on my second or third or something. Um, right. But yeah, right now it's uh, lately. My dogs have been waking me up early. Not my dogs. My my one dog. Mm -hmm. <laughs> my dog has been, and uh, it's been just I don't know. I feel like he like sleeps all day and then wakes me up early. Um, I understand that yeah. all too well. Yeah, you got uh, dogs or kids? I'm sure. I've uh, just recently had a kid. He's four months old now, and uh, ah, yeah, yeah, that's a... yeah. So uh, you want to talk about getting up at five a.m. in the morning every day? I mean, he's he's clockwork. He's the he's the new alarm clock for me. But uh, right, do you get like uh, you have to sleep at like weird hours of the day, or how is it with uh, someone that you know? No, to... so luckily I've got Megan to like you know fall back on. But because um, yeah. I usually I work full time while she works part time at night, so I'll go to work. But um, thank God he's finally on a schedule because he wasn't for the longest time the first three months. But uh, now he'll go to bed at like eight or nine ish. And I know that's my cue. My ass better start getting tired <laughs> because I'll be up at 5 a.m. with him ready to give him a bottle and everything. But uh, it's funny because I, I have a, a, a orange cat uh, named Milo. Yeah. And he does not like Wesley whatsoever. He thinks that little guy. No, not at all. So every time I'm ready to go to bed, Milo jumps on my chest and wants my attention at that time because he feels like he's being neglected. Right. So it's ridiculous. Yeah, man. Jealous. And yes. Happens. <laughs> the jealousy is real. <laughs> uh, even the animals, the jealousy is real. Um, right. I'm going to pull up my screen here for the art I'm going to do. Uh, I, sure. I, I'm not, I don't even think I can reveal what this is. Um, but before I do that, let me put your link pinned that way. Whoever is jumping in here can easily get to it. <clears throat> I usually do that before, but a little behind. Uh, so are you working on issue two, two star circuit? Is that what you're doing? I, I am. I'm working on, uh, well, I, I had like a plan that kind of backfired on me. I, I essentially... I went part time at my job to get more comic work in, but to right. make up for it, I have to do so much other side work that it almost like I have less time in some ways. Oh uh, man, I'm, I'm figuring that all out, um, you know, as we go here. But yeah, I'm working on Star Circuit Two, working on other side projects, working on um, this thing for, uh, or actually, you know, Clayton, Clayton, uh, yeah, I'll be doing some more tutorials for him, um, hopefully. Uh, I think that's the plan. And then also doing, uh, you know, random side commissions and stuff. So that's the, that's what I'm doing. But star circuit two is on the way. It's just, dude, it's, it's, uh, it's a problem because I, I had like, I'd like a, a huge ramp up to the first one and yep. then getting the book out and all the printer problems. Like it, it set me back on getting the work actually done for the next one. So, Right. Uh, being everything done by me, it's kind of it sucks because like I, I want to be further than I am. You know, I'm sure you realize. I'm sure everyone oh. in comics realizes they they have that feeling once in a while. Oh, I understand completely, man. But you, you know, you're the trifecta, so I have no doubt. Like trying to do your art and the writing and you know the lettering and everything. I'm sure that just it's yeah. I I, I like start 
Well, it really is fun because it's a fun thing to do. Obviously, of course. Making, making books. But the uh, I'll end up doing something uh, like thumbnailing or doing some art and or writing. And then it'll cue me into something else. And I'll go down this rabbit hole of maybe I need to design this whole new character or, or whatever <laughs> else. And then I'm not on, on track. But uh, once I get like at the actual pages started then it then it feels different because then like i'm not running into so many i guess you know uh, right like random tangents that could come up yeah. um it's really hard to be a writer and stay focused on where you need to go when you want to just branch off and create so much more for it's sure, like, no yeah. i'm at this point i need i'm at issue two i need to work on issue two not worry about like what happens after 10 issues <laughs> yeah speaking of uh issue one or two or three uh, how do you because i know you had one book put out of cobalt before mm -hmm. um your last so yeah is this officially like the third one or is this not this... really being numbered Technically, uh, I'm not numbering them, but they, it is linear. So there is like Atlantis Thrashing was the main issue one, the first 32 page issue. And Death Stalks Us, another 32 page issue is uh, issue two. So I'm not okay. really numbering them. I'm trying. I just I just don't want numbers for some reason. I'm weird like that. I, just, I like uh, subtitles. You know, it's all good to me. Like I a, mean, like I it's, it's definitely I feel like it's the opposite approach for what I'm doing. I'm too analytical, I guess, or something. Um, but you know, let's bring up your page as we talk here. Um, sure. That way, that way we can get a, some images. Cool. <clears throat> but yeah, this is cool. Dude, the first book, I you know, I hype it up wherever I can, because I really enjoyed it. I think the, I don't think there's anything really you can say that's a con about it. That's the like maybe if the only thing you could say about it is like maybe you'd liked other things to happen in a first issue you know what i mean oh um, most definitely yeah but that could be said about any book you know like right. certain people just like more of a action-based first issue some people like a lot more i guess plot threads introduced yeah. um but it seems like you had like a happy meaning for everything so i to me it worked um Maybe you Appreciate want to give it. like maybe you want to give a little bit of just background on Cobalt, and then we'll uh, we'll just have a random discussion about it, I guess. Sure. So uh, I came up with the idea for Cobalt back in uh, well, he was always kind of like muddy in there at like after 2013 when I had an accident. I became an amputee and uh, lost four fingers on my left hand while working in a factory, and uh, you know. That whole thing took place. And then in 2018, after I uh, started like meeting other and making friends within the uh, amputee community, um, we went down to Dragon Con in 2018. And we were walking around to Artist Alley and just checking out all the indie uh, stuff on the indie circuit. And he looks over at me and he's like, dude, have you ever thought of making uh, a superhero? And I was like, who hasn't, you know? Yeah. And uh, so I gave him like a muddied, watered down version of Cobalt. And uh, all these little things that I wanted to like make where like his uh, he gets introduced to uh, an orthotics and prosthetics company that's like globally worldwide. And he secretly works for them going into different places and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, this is this is just like the little bubbling coming to fruition. You know, this is uh, basically the beginning to what I wanted to, uh, you know, launch Ascend. into. Right, yeah. Right. And, uh, but anyway, so, uh, Cobalt became this seven page origin story in this, uh, little anthology that we created for kids who are growing up with, uh, congenital, uh, disorders. And, mm -hmm. uh, he, he just had a great, um, uh, connection with the kids and everything. And I really okay. enjoyed it hearing from parents and everything. And so I was like, well, I want to continue with this. I just caught that creative uh you know tick and uh right i was like well when can we do volume two guys i'm really ready to go i want to keep doing this and they're like man covid happened we're kind of like putting it on the back burner right now and i was like well can i go ahead and do this because i found a community that uh has a lot of potential for indie creators and they're like dude what is that and i was like it's comic skate and they're like whoa whoa dude stay <laughs> stay away from them no, man, they're racist, elitist, and all this stuff. And uh, they were like, don't go there. And I, whenever somebody tells me not to do something, I immediately yeah. 
go and just dive in head first. <laughs> uh, something's well, first, when someone is that kind of, I guess, uh, outright against something, you always it always makes you question. You're like, oh, okay. You're you're more curious than not. That's the Most whole definitely. like backfiring of your, you know, if your parents like, <laughs> if your parents were like really against like whatever smoking <laughs> cigarettes, you're like, oh, maybe I'll go try one because it's what's so bad pretty, about it, <laughs> right? Pretty much. So I went and did, and I went and I uh, started watching like YouTube videos. I got into uh, watching the Energy Circuit when I was watching the case for Vic, Min- uh, Vic Mignogna when he was doing the Broly mm-hmm. thing and he was had all his accusations out against him. Mm-hmm. So all those uh, sub channels started showing like you know Mark Crilly, who's a great artist on YouTube. He's a YouTuber, and then you know mm-hmm. another artist was Jazza, of course, and you know just. Right these little things just kept on connecting and I f- silently found myself looking at Ethan Van Skyver and, you know, and other ones, uh, the Barton brothers came up, you came right. up and, you know, I just, I just really enjoyed watching all these creators do their own thing. And I was like, I want to be part of that. So I was like, I got to introduce Cobalt to these guys and see what they think of it. And, uh, Dan Fraga was on, was a guest on, uh, how to draw with uh, Rob and uh, Clayton. Okay. And they were doing, they were doing the comic skate death match with uh, all these like uh, concept designs. Yeah. And, mm-hmm. and they stopped on cobalt and Dan Fraga had a lot of good things to say about it. And I was like, I'm in, I'm doing it. Let's go. That was, it got me so pumped. So I did uh, the first 32 page issue of cobalt Atlantis thrashing and come hell or high water, man. I want to continue. <laughs> yeah, dude. I, I think like uh, your book, because uh, I do. There's a lot of people that get their book out, um, and sometimes it doesn't meet expectations. That happens sometimes. Um, right. Either like sometimes it's quality. Sometimes the book's good, but the quality is uh, not as uh, up to par. I'd say like um, I feel like uh, I don't know if you've read Dixie Rose, but Dixie Rose is a great book, and it's got like a great another cyberpunky kind of feel yeah. it's got a little bit of a racing backdrop too you know matt fowler's book right i just um, i just got it last week actually uh, nice nice so on the quality on that book that i feel like i the cover i guess stock disappointed me so little things like that can disappoint you on top of the story but right. the book's great so there's always a little something you know no matter what uh but i'm glad that i'm glad that like you're putting it out because i think it's one of the cooler it's very nightwing inspired obviously of it's course. got a very yes at least that's the first thing that comes to mind for me. Um, and I, you know, anybody in, I think Nightwing's like a universally loved character. I don't know if there's anybody that's like, Oh, I prefer, I prefer, you know, this other sidekick with sticks, uh, over, yeah. <laughs> over yeah. Him. like daredevil or moon Knight or you know, Donatello right. from TMNT. I, I mean, you know, just, <laughs> I mean, he just inspires, um, you know, he, he gets a little bit of the, the, the coming of age thing, but a little bit past that. He's like, he's like, he's kind of, yeah, he had that back when he was Robin. I mean, Nightwing is right. his own thing. He's, that's right. what I really connected with that character about was, uh, you know, we all have fathers and fathers kind of want you to follow in their footsteps with their work ethic and everything like that. And that kind of situation happened with Bruce Wayne and Dick Grayson. And I was like, well, this is why I connect with that character so much. It's he's Batman, but he's more open to relationships and forging bonds and allies and not really like right out the gate. As soon as he learns what your powers is like, how can I fuck that up if I really need to? <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. So, uh, you know, I, I feel you. I'm, I'm, I like, I'm glad you're putting it out there. Cause it, it's, it's like a, you know, it's a Nightwing that I can really get behind as far as like it not being DC. Uh, not that I'm against DC. It's just, I feel like there's no reason to just perpetuate, you know, uh, something that's like kind of flawed now. So there's like a good, a good portion of, of what they're putting out that's not great who knows if the nightwing books are are, are okay or, or what's kind of been corrupted or not corrupted they, after his whole like amnesia thing mm. kind of like what bruce wayne already already went through this yeah. this really that was kind of like uh dick grayson's nightfall i was like i'm done they're just mm. rehashing shit that's already been done and uh then i heard that they gave him a sister and shit yeah. and i was like nope uh, no 
just now. And so yeah, um, they they did try to do a whole lot of things with with Dick, and uh, I feel like I feel like it's it's just legacy. I feel like I'm I'm not against legacy media or legacy like sure. you know, IPs, but if there's something equally as cool like your character and it's giving me all the same vibes and maybe some other things that I'm not really getting. Um, you know, it's just sometimes you're just like, oh, I, I can give up. <laughs> I yeah. can give up. I, I can trade make that trade. So, uh, yeah, a lot so of people yeah. have, like, compared him to Nightwing and stuff, which is, which is fine. It doesn't really bug me. I mean, the, the whole blue thing was an homage to Nightwing. And, mm. uh, yeah. you know, but the rest of them, you know, his circle of friends, his group, how he came to be completely different. It's kind of like comparing sure. Batman to Moon Knight, you know. It's like, oh, another, you know, Night vigilante dude with a bunch of right. money and everything i was like yeah but that fucker's got ptsd and a totally different manner with he's he's fucking sybil in a suit is what he is right, right. and uh, so but you know i've had others like call uh cobalt he he's like he looks like sub-zero and striker from mortal Kombat had a baby and uh <laughs> i was like all right i like that one too those are two cool characters um even though they're doing striker kind of wrong right now but uh right. you know so I, I that's cool. I, I feel like you're, uh, and I get it. Like you, I hate when your character is like put in a box and that's something that you don't want necessarily. Yeah. Um, I think me bringing up Nightwing was mostly for like the, you know, the, the people that out there that are on the fence about maybe giving it a shot and you're like, okay, right. Um, you're going to get some good vibes. So what, what kind of base, like what, what kind of audience member, what, would you say they would also be reading if they're going to like Cobalt? Oh, if you like street level vigilantism, then, you know, you, you've enjoyed Daredevil. You've enjoyed Moon Knight. You've enjoyed the Bat family. I mean, God, who hasn't at this point? And uh, it's, it's all over mainstream media now. I mean, how can you get away from it? And, yeah. uh, you know, just others, you know, Green Arrow is another good one, especially uh, the art that inspired that I really fell in love with was Mike Grell, uh, Patrick mm -hmm. Reynolds, you know, that very like gritty, uh, more realistic art style that Erwin J. Rosa gave for me on, on these pieces. Yeah. Um, that's what really speaks to me. And I love the painterly arts. That's why I got Max Bertolini to do the first issue for me. Of course, nice. the, the cover of this one is Erwin Arosa. So my interior artist did the cover this time around with the dressing mm -hmm. by Exivius and, uh, yeah so uh dude I, yeah, I dig the art um like the i think i had one when i was reading the book i, I probably had one um p bit of feedback which i can get to later on but sure i really dig i really dig the art um straight up it's just you know your interior artist like it it's some of the best out there i think personally uh in this style where it's like it's very very realistic um you know you're almost hyper real with a little bit more yep. of, you know, there's like a lot of different cool colors and, and, um, kind of yeah. designs going on. But yeah, I, I dig what you did in the first one. So I, I, without a bet, without a doubt, I'll be back in it. It's like, definitely it's on my top of the list. I, I backed, um, I think I backed Vaughn's book, but you know, that's also another thing where you're like, you've already backed somebody and you know what they're going to put out. So it's a similar thing. Yeah. So I'll definitely be repeating and, and back in the book. Appreciate um, it, man. Yeah. Uh, yeah so Irwin, your, he, what, oh, go ahead. I was going to say, what's your, what's your like, um, I guess, approach with, with bringing the second one to life? Like, did you, did you already have it written and you're working on the whole time? The second, the first one was out or how'd that so go? I had like the first four issues condensed in, you know, a little composition book, you know? So yeah. And uh, the main points that I wanted to hit for every scene and whatnot. And uh, this time around, so uh, the first issue, you know, in Atlanta's Thrashing, he came up on the Thrasher gang, uh, Damsel in Distress, and uh, kind of just snowballed from there. And uh, the, uh, the uh, benefactor for the Thrashers hired somebody else to come on and uh, take care of some loose ends that were taking place because he wasn't happy with what the Thrashers uh, we're doing and failing to do. And yeah. uh, I don't want to give too much away because I want them to come back and buy a, uh, <laughs> you know, issue one on the, in case you missed it tier. But right. uh, anyway, so all that took place 
And now in issue two, I'm kind of doing a 180 with how uh, Cobalt was presented because, you know, he, he took down, you know, five fucking guys in the first issue, you know, right out the gate. And I'm yeah. just like, all right, we're going to, so this is the reality that you think, you know, now we're going to flip it, which is why that mm-hmm. one uh, um, page that has the mirror shattering that's mm-hmm. that's reference to I'm about to fuck up the reality that you think you know, and uh, okay, so. I like that. I dig that because you know it, you want to disrupt like what you know you think was like stable, the status quo. I guess exactly. Um, so is, in that meaning, do you mean that being like uh, we're gonna throw in something that you haven't seen before in the book or? Like his like uh, his comfort zone is about to be destroyed. His comfort so uh, zone is about to be ruined. It's it's about to be impaled, and uh, you know. Mm. So here you see uh, Death Stalker like rolling three uh, uh, balls towards him that are glowing red and everything. Yeah, of course, see. you see what that turns into and whatnot. Mm. But um, so the Death Stalker was hired by the by the benefactor to take out uh, this young lady right here, Detective Reyes. And uh, it just so happens that she was investigating Jesse Jensen because he gave up his identity because God knows why, just, you mm-hmm. know, naive reasons. And uh, so she's investigating him at his uh, house, at his childhood home. And when you know it, the Death Stalker followed her to that exact same location because he's trying to take out a contract on her. Well, mm-hmm. unbeknownst to them both, Jesse's hiding in the kitchen, listening to everything that's going on. And Jesse's like, well, I could either go out the back door and save my own ass, which isn't very heroic, you know, but then right. again, you know, he's he's not exactly in the role just yet. So mm-hmm. um, uh, Deathstalker throws his uh, knife at her, trying to get her directly in the neck. Uh, Jesse throws the mirror out there and uh, it ricochets off of it to where it only barely slits her throat. And this is where it launches. Oh, OK. Interesting. I. I, I dig it. I, I dig the approach. Um, yeah, it seems like it seems like you're in, you're going to change up kind of, uh, you know, it's not going to be so straightforward. Uh, I do the villain in the first one was introduced and, and like very, you know, definitely uh, capable. <laughs> yeah, so you're like, you're like kind of worried about it already. So yeah, so you the, get to the, see the death stalker is uh is actually inspired by the Peshmerga. They helped us out over in Afghanistan when we were Mm -hmm. during that war. And when we couldn't get our boys into a certain area, um, the Peshmerga were like, well, we'll fucking do it. You know, we're we're right next door. And uh, so the Death Stalkers is basically the special ops unit that nobody knows about for the Peshmerga. Mm -hmm. And we, uh, since we were uh, allied with them at that point, we took them on and showed them some traits and whatnot and trained their people. And that's Mm. where the Death Stalkers came from. So the Death Stalkers was actually a unit. He was the last surviving one, which makes him the Death Stalker. And of course, the Death Stalker is inspired by the the yellow and golden scorpions over there in the Middle East, which is why we have, you know, bionic, uh, I mean, uh, nanite. Uh, scorpions right here and mm. so you know just just yeah, a little teeth yeah i because i didn't know anything about it really about the history and like where you're pulling from but even for anybody like me you're like it's de- you're you're getting the vibe and you're like every, the motifs are there obviously the scorpions fit um but yeah a good design as well on him uh definitely scary definitely uh intimidating <laughs> That's what I was going so, for. <laughs> yeah, well, well done. And you know, this page, like, uh, I really like how he lays out um, his panel work. I, that's one thing that I'm trying to work on myself is is uh, overall just making the page look prettier. Like, not within the panels, just how they're laid out. Usually, right. mine are a little more haphazard than I'd like them to be. And this is this is nice. Um, I read Star Circuit, looks. man. For what you pulled out, man. I mean, I. <laughs> I'm not going to lie, dude, you're, you're going to be making the Kings look behind on their shoulder because with what you brought to the table, I mean, they, they've got to look out because you're probably going to be taking some of their clientele. Thanks dude. I, well, I mean, uh, I, I would imagine um, that a lot of us will be chipping away at, <laughs> at some of the big boys. Cause 
you're not getting everything. Like that's the problem with only backing the big guys. You're only getting yeah. what a small sliver of what they can do because a one artist and one collaborator team can only hit really one or two IPs a year. And so mm -hmm. you have to back multiple people to get your kind of fix, you know, yeah, <laughs> if you want to no have doubt. your fix fully done, you know, you're not going to get your, uh, you know, ground level vigilante stuff from just, you know, maybe one book, there might be another couple out there. But to me, right. you should be chipping away at them too. I feel like it's really just outreach um, at this point, your quality's there, you know how they say, you know, like when you're trying to make something, the keys to success or whatever, right? Key number one is to like make something good. Um, <laughs> and the point is, you got that there. Like I, I have no, like a lot of other people, I have somewhat of a hesitancy with like pushing their book because I know right. it's it's still building. It's still like they got to work on this or work on that. Right. Um, you know, they're still learning their own products. So, you right. know, which is with fine. Your... That, that, sorry, that, that was the approach that, mm -hmm. uh, oh, you're what? going for. <laughs> yeah. Right. And, uh, so, uh, but, um, no, uh, Makashi well, Miyamoto, the Dragon Ball guy. Yeah. Like, yeah like after uh his initial run to the frieza arc it was basically him just going at it like after chapter after chapter at that point and he was just going yeah, oh well, what, i think you mean akira toriyama akira toriyama what what yeah, the hell yeah. did i say <laughs> i i don't know Makashi <laughs> miyamoto yeah, i think that's a character <laughs> it's all yeah, good. akira it's all toriyama good. my god yeah Dude, you can of Joe stream. <laughs> <laughs> yeah we have uh on the cup of joe stream we don't have to worry about this because like we're all kind of uh lacking uh let's check the chat real quick because we have some people coming up yo indie wrestling aces is here uh genuine comments on, is, uh come to hang out for a bit and greg what's Jim. going on uh it's early in the morning and we usually only start at 10 30 so we're here kind of a little early but thanks yeah. for showing up and and uh kind of hanging out with us if you have any questions for Cobalt uh, and Jake, let me know. Or if you just want to comment about, uh, you know, gushing over some of the work or whatever you see on the page, let us know. Uh, but dude, you your uh, your book, I don't have any, I don't have any like hesitancy. That's what I was going at. Like, like if I want to recommend it, I, I have no other uh, disclaimers, if you will. <laughs> like I feel like appreciate you know, it. Cobalt, there's no, <laughs> you know, you're like, oh, the arts, you know, it's, it's getting there. You know, there's no, there's no qualms with the art or story from, um, you know, basing it off the first book. Um, and dude, it's, it's, it just seems like, you know what you want. And from talking to you off, you know, of, you know, like streams and whatnot, like, it seems like, you know, what you want similar to like me or like B Rose, like there's a specific thing we're trying to show and we don't care about the, the rest, the minutia of all the right. other things that maybe get associated with our books tangentially, you know, like right. cyberpunk. I'm not trying to do like brain hacking and stuff. Like I'm interested in right. cyberpunk racing and some other stuff in that realm. Yeah. Um, we're not, we're not out there just to grab a, a you know, a generalized thing. looks like right. you have what you want. Uh, so what's, what's the plan ahead here? You have a plan to do a book each year or how's this going to work? I'm going to try to, um, it, as it's proving like it's, uh, with new, with new, uh, things happening in my life, you know, with the kid mm. and everything. And, uh, it gets a little bit more difficult to sit down and try and like give time to your IP when somebody else needs you 24 seven. And uh, so anytime that I, you know, am able to put Wesley down to a nap, I immediately go back and like, all right, now I got to figure out this scene. I've got about three or four hours to figure it out before he wakes up and needs another bottle and shit. And just, right. you know, but um, it's so hard to constrain, with, yeah, creativity or, or just like your process. It's like yeah. changing up your process probably. Yeah. It's not, it's not like everybody, uh, well, not everybody else, but you know, there are some artists out here that are able to just devote their time to it a hundred percent, 24 seven, because it, artistry is their income, you know? Mm -hmm. And so me, I'm working full time. Like I just uh, told you, uh, in the, in the green room yeah. and uh, it's, it's difficult, man. It's difficult, but I love it so much. And I love interacting with all you guys and, you know, hearing about your uh ips you know 
and just you know just the creative juices every time i talk to you guys it just builds up even more and i'm like i gotta write something down and uh yeah. <laughs> so I, and you, know, uh, you hear you hear other people's or you see other people's ips like getting more and more fleshed out and you're like oh man i need to get to that point of right you know of my, my story or you know where you know that's the downfall of not the downfall but the i guess the the shadow side of seeing star yep. circuits bright future is that you only get to see so much so you're like it's a very cliffhanger type of issue you're like left right. wanting more that was the idea but at the same time you know you're you're left wanting more which is not seeing the the full picture and that's what i see and i'm sure you're you're in the same boat where you're like oh, i want to show the the things i wanted i want them to get to where i see them in the future oh no doubt yeah i've got ideas where i want to go like um Right now he's in, right now, uh, you know, after Jesse Cobal, he dismantled the Aranya cartel mm -hmm. and uh, immediately went into hiding after that because they're the bastards that took his hand, you know, took took right. away the chance to save his mom's life who had cancer. And uh, so he very much is just like down on his luck, just want to stay low and quiet. He's hanging out in a fucking motel with his little brother. You know, that's his his big thing that he knows he has to take care of, but at the same time is ignoring. So yeah, mm -hmm. this is, this is art here by uh, Adam Miller. And yeah. uh, again, that I, painterly art, God, man. It fits your, your whole book and the whole thing. I, I might have a print next time coming from him because you all the ones I've seen so far are, are very uh, composed. Stellar. Well, color is just like, this isn't a, just an attractive piece, no matter where you look at it. Um, right. And you, but yeah, you can actually get that at the tier level as a metal print. <laughs> Heck yeah, so let's let's see where that is. Is that uh, the top featured, or is that somewhere in between here? That is the the name's Cobalt, the hundred dollar tier. Hundred dollar tier at the, at the bottom. Okay, so yeah, that's dude. This is where you get tons of things. It says it here. Uh, that's sixteen by twenty. Is that metal, or is that the not the? That's the poster to the oh, uh, right. Okay, so then the metal print, that's still pretty big. How big is that metal print? 12 by 18. Dude, that's like, that's also <laughs> maybe worth putting in here. You're like, dude, that's huge. That's like, you might even not call that a, you might change that to a poster because it's almost <laughs> the same size. Uh, very close. So yeah, that's that's actually a really cool one because um, the metal, it's, it's hard to beat that metal because you're, it, especially with a lot of cyberpunk, things that have metal on it like the the shine on the metal really adds to it pretty sweet um i will definitely be back in this thing i don't know what i'm what i'll be able to afford yet but i, I want your book to fund obviously i won't mix miss the funding uh, i want to get your book up there and rolling um, appreciate it so i feel like what's your uh i, I know life's changing but uh, i think what's the projected time to get this thing out do you have it in the campaign here uh, projected time. I have like it print. in, I, be, I believe it's either in there or it's in the update that I've already given out. Okay. So let's uh, give a, let's check the update then the way you can, okay. uh, but I can, I can bit. tell you right out the gate. Uh, so uh -huh. last, last year I, uh, I pushed for July as my fulfillment date and, mm. uh, I got a little bit behind there because that was very much a time crunch from launching in February, March, you know, closing in April, and then, you know, that little time space to get everything done. But, um, you know, July was when I wanted to fulfill. I fulfilled like late August, early September. So it was mm. still right there where it needed to be. It was a little late, slapped my wrist for doing such. But, uh, you know, we, we got out there. <laughs> it seems like you did a great job. You beat me to the punch and we launched about the same time. Um, mm -hmm. And that's a lot. That's a lot being said because there's a lot of problems out there right now with resources and yeah and paper shortage problems. and stupid shit yeah, yeah. dude it's it, it happens i know the the printer rebuilt used um kind of their whole staff almost like got fired or something um so <laughs> it's it's a crazy time everywhere and you hear that from every printer you go like mm -hmm. that's the problem there's like not really a place to go unless you know a guy personally that has a print shop you might be able to have a little bit of a an upper hand with figuring this all this all out right um you know uh gentleman says is this digital coloring uh, it's unlike the usual american comics 
Uh, yes, Erwin Arosa. Uh, he was he was a college uh, uh, teacher in the arts. He was the art teacher at a college over there in the Philippines, and uh, all of his work's digital. Yeah, mm. so very. So when I heard that, it, it blew my mind because you think it, like it's being done on like real rough, thick paper or, mm-hmm. you know, being scanned in. But no, that's all digital. Yeah, it seems like he's he's got it down pat. Um, my OK, so maybe this r- rings into um, oops, where we can go here with uh, my feedback, because uh, I you know, it's not bad feedback. I, I noticed that it happens to some books and I'm just a, maybe a more of a stickler for not a stick, but maybe I get lost easier, but sure. um, I'm always about the background. So I'd say trying to push one more panel, let's just say if you got five panels on the page or whatever, or in the next couple pages, maybe 10 or so, try to get one, maybe two with like a, a more location-based background in, I get in the you. shot. And that would like really, that would really ground. That was my only gripe with the story that I read before. Um, I got lost with positioning. Like I knew what the characters were all doing in great detail and I knew the emotions and I felt for them and everything else. Um, but yeah, the only thing I could possibly say is, you know, maybe a little bit more background. Like here, you get a little bit here and you get a, a little bit in the background here. Um, yeah. I think this one works, this page, but we'll just say in general, that's what would be my gripe. Uh, uh, my feedback, n- right? Not to, not to like, debunk your your uh, yeah, go for uh, it. <laughs> thought or whatever <laughs> but uh in in that uh panel where you see the mirror shatter you see a fire extinguisher get its clip pulled so mm. i think that's the fog like kind of like m- you know making it hazy to where not everybody really knows where the other okay. is and everything uh, okay. that might be to it because uh, my my script did have locations in it yeah I, I, <laughs> but, like i said it. <laughs> With this one and being foggy or whatever, like I'm, I'm cool with this page. Like, um, I think it was everything based on you know whether the first book. I get you. No, I totally just understand. One or two pages where I was like, oh, are they still in the alleyway? Or are they did they move? You know what I mean? No, I had um, I had the same the same uh, intuition that you did on that one, and he was okay. like, well, I'm just focusing on the action right now. I was like, fair enough. But right. you, you know, <laughs> and, yeah, and but yeah, it's it, I feel like backgrounds can distract you from you know the action so you got to be careful sometimes too so it, right. it, i guess the silver lining is <laughs> like the action is is like always uh center with with the first book at least and so i'm okay. i'm proud of what what i saw you know and like knowing that you guys are it's like the first book you're like man this is killer <laughs> um, so i'm stoked to like back this again or you know the second book coming um and you know just see what's happening uh do you have a good trailer you want to play trailer while we're yeah here? go for it man let's, let's see if i have i don't know if i have audio on let's pull the screen just to make sure okay <clears throat> but uh genuine comics is right it's a it's a beautiful style oh thanks know, I, it's very it's very different which is a good thing anytime anybody's like it's not traditional comic right. book coloring. It means it stands out. It means you're going to remember it. You know, there's tons of comics that have this kind of shiny, glossy uh, Photoshop look. Yeah. You know, uh, it's like uh, the seven page origin story that's in the back of the first issue. That was the actual seven page origin story where I had another artist uh, named Jacob Newell. Uh, mm-hmm. You can find him on Instagram or Facebook. But it was very much like the modern day comic, you know, fine line. Hello, uh, fine lines, <laughs> yeah. yeah, fine lines, you know, bright colors and stuff like that. And it, it hit the mark. I, I really I loved it. He did a great job. But mm-hmm. I was like, I need something more gritty going forward because we're I'm walking away from little kids with this story. And I want mm-hmm. it to be more adult themed Uh young adult oriented you know finding out like where does the where's the line drawn in Mm -hmm. you know the not so black and white you know very much appeal the appeal for older audiences are going to be a little bit more they want to be seen as adults so like that adult kind of i guess art is going to pull them in right and uh so i'm going to pull this in and play it let's see is it loud too loud Oh, you're good. Okay. 
It's like a perfect um <laughs> it's like a perfect freaking uh like background track for your kind of ip right it's like yeah. what you imagine <laughs> you know, especially it, something with that and you're like villain it just all makes sense with that track in the background so good choice good call appreciate it uh that that was done by uh, a fiverr artist i i forget her name but she's from india mm. and uh I, I actually went out of my way and and uh, had a theme song created for the Cobalt uh, series, and uh, mm. I actually I actually took that little note from you, and uh, nice. so I did that, and it was very much uh, grim, slow, depressing, you know, kind of like that Nord feel to it, and mm. it did not fit with what she produced in video, but mm. she had already thought about what kind of music she wanted to put to her own video. So I went with that. I've got the video that has my cobalt Check. theme to it, but mm. it's, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't compare to what she put together on her own. So I went with okay. hers. Yeah. Sometimes it just works when it flows from the creator, you know, um, right. You know, when they're putting it all together, everything's just going to have a better edit. Probably. Uh, K manifesto is here. What's up K manifesto dude, Kevin, how you doing? Um, uh, good morning to everyone. This is a cup of Joe stream. We got Jake. Um, I feel like I'm on NPR now when I do that. <laughs> we got, uh, Jake here. We're gonna we're gonna be listening to some smooth jazz and, and talking to Jake for the next hour. Uh, so uh, actually, our time's close closer to up than not. So yeah. Um, but yeah, this is. I will definitely be backing uh, anybody who is on the fence. Just click follow. If you go click follow, it'll just remind you to, to go back to it and check it out. I think that's the, to me, that's more important than sharing it personally, because who knows what the person's reach is. I think once you get a person to the page, getting them to click follow, it's not that hard. It's no money. It don't, like literally it doesn't email you or something. Just you click it and then once in a while, it'll let you know you have not checked it out um, and gone back to it. Uh, it helps me out just to remind me. There's so many books you're like, oh, I want to go back. So, <laughs> but really cool art. It looks like the action is well done. You know, these like moment to moment shots here with the with the frying pan. Uh, it's pretty funny. Uh, I dig it. <laughs> He's I, I just playing see... with them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I want to see more, dude. <laughs> I do want to see more. Uh, Appreciate I'm glad it. This is a, a print uh, from yep. the first book, right? Yes, yeah, that's the sixteen by twenty poster that you'll be able to get. Nice, nice. That's that's pretty big too. That that'll be, dude. If I had more room in my my office, I'd be putting up everybody's art. I but I like to frame them, so it's hard to get them up and and done quick. Right. Uh, is there some dojo dojo kun? Yes. So uh, actually, yeah. So actually, um, dojo kun and I we both launched uh, consecutively on the Michael Bancroft channel. Mm, and nice. if you back if you back both of our campaigns at a physical tier, mm -hmm. you're going to get this bonus homage print for, that uh, refers to X Men 141. Mm -hmm. And you hear here you see on the front uh, my character Cobalt, and then his character from the Shifter Naya. And then okay, back nice. in the background, you see a you plethora everybody. of CG characters. Yeah, and uh, I don't so... even know if I could count them all, but I'm pretty <laughs> sure I, I know most of them. Um, we'll say that I see Perfect Ten um, as well, but there's there's some yep. that I don't know. I don't maybe a couple I don't know. Yeah, uh, 
if we're going from the top left to the right, that's uh, the Lucent, Reaper Destroyer, Type yep. 1, the Boss from Company Men, the Embrace. You got Rage okay, Tality. Yeah, the Boss from Company Men I would have yep. missed, I feel like. Rage Tality, you've got mm-hmm. Perfect 10. Uh, and then downcast? I don't. Downcast, yes. And then. Um, the next that's, one that's uh that's six five six uh in that yes. one's, uh i forgot what that creature's name is yeah but, luckily on the back of this print it also have uh numbered off who is who from what uh mm-hmm. ip yeah. because right next to that uh is uh black roses character uh from uh cerebrum yes yes what's there it saint his name's saint, saint. there you go and then, of course you got <laughs> black flag you got ghosts uh-huh. and a bunch of others man so yeah yeah I, dude I, tons um i think i yeah ghost and Aerith and uh I'm trying to like yep. remember all of them uh now that we're here but talus is here and speaking of yep. talus we got area in the Arya's in the chat so what up area <laughs> area says talus is yes we noticed talus is yep. on that print um good to have everybody um on this dude this is really cool um i I dig i dig what's going on with like collaborations like this speaking of i'm working on one uh a little bit on the side i don't know if you know if if i can even talk about it um which i won't talk about it but i'll show the art i'm working on okay Um, so it's a little it's not a collaboration but it's going to be maybe all together collaborated eventually um let me see if i can bring it up Pulled up the screen before and didn't get to show it. All right, let's go. Here. Does it come? Does it come in and allow uh, Star Circuit to be part of it, or is it a totally different IP that you're just working on? It's it's Star Circuit. It's more like what you guys are talking about here, where everybody's character is going to be made. I get you. Included, okay, you know, one of those type of deals. And so, cool. right now, I'm just working on a pinup for it, I believe. Let's see. Maybe I can zoom in. It, I, I have to zoom in on here. I'm getting backwards. I have to zoom in on my iPad. I can't zoom in on the the, the, the video. How are you supposed to get your character on six AM's chibi uh collage, man? Because I've been I trying to know. poke at him. <laughs> I don't even have one of his uh his <laughs> things yet, dude. I went, I actually went and, uh, like had him do the chibi cold, uh, for me, because if you signed up on the mailing list, uh, uh-huh. and you back at a physical level, you'll be getting, uh, the cobalt, uh, 6am chibi as a magnet. So <laughs> I had really him do nice. that. Yeah. And I was like, well, to me, I mean, I did metal trading cards, but you know, people, people can lose cards all the time, but you know, magnets, you're always throwing them up on your fridge. Cause you have important shit to keep there to remind you later on. So I was like, I think magnets are the way to go with your characters. But, um, dude, I, I dig magnets, magnets. Cause you never, I feel like everybody's got a little bit more room for magnets over like stickers or, you know, right. Magnets are not permanent. So I guess it's a little bit more lenient on people's like decision-making and where to put them and stuff. Yeah. Um, uh, but I also have, I have like a metal art cart that I put magnets on the, the fridge, plenty of places. All right, let's pull this up. So this is hip in her, uh, this is hip for my story, fighting some, um, some, some creeps in the alleyway, but coming up with interesting, um, Oh wow. Interesting composition here. So I like it because it's kind of like framed from a guy fighting her. Um, so it'll be interesting. This is still what I would call layouts. Uh, so, but this is what I'm working on. What, this is what I would be if I wasn't so engrossed with talking to you. This is what I would be. <laughs> <laughs> That's so, okay. No, nah, that looks yeah, awesome. This is, this is going to be pretty sweet. She, she got torn up a little bit, but also beating some fools up in a, a cyberpunky way. This one will probably be covered, uh, or colored rather, not covered. Was that a high tech yeah. nunchaku? Yeah, it's going to be, not really. It's, um, it's like a little mix. It's like, um. It's not really like a traditional web. It's more like okay. a piece of. She's always in in like garages and stuff. It's just a piece of uh, a tool in a garage that is kind of makeshift. Like she's okay. Makeshift. It's like a it's a chain that you use to like uh, 
jack up cars and stuff and bikes and she's just using it all right she's a little beast all right i like it (laughs) yeah so she's the fighter of the crew if you know like my main character does not know how to fight um it's funny we'll we'll show that in a lot of the future Uh, he knows how to race but he doesn't know how to fight and so uh, (laughs) part of his growth is him learning how to do things he's not comfortable with doing right so um yeah so well we need some art toys from you that composition was great um Speaking of guys, I uh, I just talked to Clayton, um, and I probably will be doing tutorials on how to draw comics.net. So uh, go uh, support him over on his channel. I think everybody does already. The dude is huge. Um, but yeah, how to draw comics.net. I already have a bunch of tutorials, and so I, I took a huge hiatus. Uh, but I need I needed some side work done here and there. So I was like, dude, I'll I'll do some regularly for you. So those will be. Um, coming soon and i think we're going to start with like a posing tutorial so get ready for stuff like this this is going to be this one was a happy accident where like i really just wanted something the framer and i was thinking either a chain link f- fence because they're diagonal lines and then i realized like oh, you probably could have a guy's arm frame this thing and uh so <clears throat> that's awesome that, that you're able to coming. collaborate with them on the on the draw stream that's going to be wicked yeah, I wonder if I'll I'll do that. Most of my the tutorials I do are all um, like text based and image okay. based on his website. But maybe we'll end up doing a stream. I'm sure we will, uh, depending on how much time I have and you know everything yeah. else. <laughs> Speaking of time, yeah, you're out. <laughs> yeah, I gotta get going, guys. I gotta go to work. Uh, I want thank you so much for pushing it earlier for me to actually come on here and do this with you. Appreciate Dude. it. No worries, dude. I, I I'm stoked. I would back it here on the on the stream, but I maybe do. I'll do it when you leave. Okay. <laughs> that way, less pressure on me. <laughs> All right. Awesome, All right. Dude. Thanks again, uh, man. Peace out. Best of luck with the book. I'll be spreading the word. Appreciate it. I'll check you All guys right. later. See you, Jake. Later. All right. So yeah, this is this is cup of Joe. So we don't need anything but a cup and a Joe. And we can continue on with the stream. I like how my camera's dollied, like I'm in an action scene. Let's let's fix that. Uh, that's a little better, right? Okay. So notice that I had a beard earlier this week. I couldn't deal with it. I, my my face was itching, and my uh, my fiance was uh, thinking I looked old with all the gray, and I couldn't I couldn't agree, or couldn't uh, argue with that. Uh, I do feel much. I feel. I would. I think I look in my twenties now that I'm got no beard, no gray beard on me. All right. So um, I was gonna work on that piece. I could. I could bring it up again and maybe work on it some more. Um, or I could bring up this page again and maybe back. Let's let's maybe back Cobalt Live here. Let's do some Cobalt uh, Love. Let's do this. Uh, bring that up. So yeah, I usually don't do this, but let's, I think it's a good idea to kind of go through it. We looked at it with the creator. We know Jake. He's a good guy. And we know what he's kind of uh, about. And if you've, got, if you've got the first book, you know that this is, is probably not going to disappoint you. It definitely didn't leave me wanting more after reading uh, Helena's Thrashing, uh, which is uh, right here, was the first book. Um, so... What I have to do is figure out if I'm going to back. Um, I'm definitely going to back physically. I just don't know if I'm going to back um, and get the stickers. I don't need both copies because I have the first one already. So I think the physical fight is the most obvious. I don't know if I have, like I said, wall space. I need wall space to get this be a vigilante poster. However, I really do want... Uh, to help them out, and maybe this ad would help me out. A uh, hundred bucks isn't that bad for a. Where is the ad going to be? Do we know if the ads physically in the front, in the back, or that's what I need to know for this one? Um, so maybe I will hold until I get that answered, because I might want to advertise with the guy. It'd be really cool to know. Uh, but the dude to get the get the suite. Have you guys seen this, uh, Adams? Painting of this, dude, it's so sweet. And uh, a poster of this in metal would be killer. I'm down. So I'm probably going to back uh, it physical like this. 
Oh, don't do that. Oh man, I got doxxed. <laughs> we'll edit that out, bro. Um, so yeah, I'll do that later and we'll have a good old time. Uh, good old time reading the new one. I hope uh, anybody in the chat, <laughs> hope any in the chat like Kate Manifesto is also back in the book, spreading the book, uh, share the book, follow this book. And while we're here, let's look at Star Circuit. Um, Star Circuit is indeed also something you can back, but it's so close to 20K. Anybody you know that has not read Star Circuit, give it a give it a share, please. DM it around a little bit. Um, we have like, I, don't know, I can count them on my hand how many of the main covers we have left. So go back, Star Circuit, uh, because it's, it's the last time you'll be able to get this cover. I have a new black cover. It kind of looks like, the new black cover looks like the t-shirt with um, a little bit more of a flair to it. Uh, but yeah, the new cover kind of has this on it, like the t-shirt and uh, not overlaid with the title like that, but it's gonna have this holographic looking bike on the cover. And so this is the last time you're gonna be able to get the main cover. Definitely go check it out. I don't wanna harp on it any more than that. This book is, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, everything I've tried to put into, um, you know, I guess my my level of artistic growth and, and where I'm at with writing, I've done my best on it, put a ton of time into it. It's something you're gonna really enjoy. So check that out. Um, on the way, or, or by the way, also go check out uh, the Ultimate Art Guide. I don't have it pulled up. I thought this was it the whole time. It was just my Twitter. Uh, the Ultimate Art Guide is uh, linked in the description. Go check that out. If you want to have any tips on how to do art, I know I want to do more tutorials. Subscribe to my channel if you've not, because there are videos coming, and there are videos that you, you may uh, have seen, but they're actually instructional tutorials for doing comics. So go check those out. They're a little old, but... I, I actually think they're kind of charming in their in their own way. <laughs> they're fun to listen to, uh, you know, younger version of myself telling you, uh, kind of guiding you in a way that I thought was the best way to guide you. Uh, not all of it's great, but all of it is very, I think like you're going to find similar problems that I ran into as I worked on tutorials and, and worked on art. So check that out. Thanks for joining me. This is... Uh, this is the Cup of Joe stream. A little early. Uh, this week I have another guest on Art Bros. Me and Jerem have another guest. Uh, eventually we're going to have an, an animation stream where we get all the animators together uh, and talk games. Maybe a totally separate game stream too uh, where we can talk games, maybe play games. That would be fun. Uh, anybody who's into gaming, let us know. Uh, I'm, I'm diving into Elden Ring. I don't know if you've seen that game. It looks like a, a blast. And so uh, having a little bit of an adventure there as I do artwork. I may be storyboarding today. How about you guys? What are you guys doing today? Hope you have um, a productive day or just a fun day. Uh, <clears throat> and also go back Cobalt. Please uh, spread the word for that book. Dude, that, that Cobalt is... It is definitely needing the push because what you see on the page does not match the funding uh, amount he's got so far. So definitely go get it. Apparently you can play it on PS4 Pro and it's okay. Um, but I hear PC is kind of crappy with Elden Ring right now. Anyway, PS5, uh, there's definitely ways to get one for the same price, but it's it's a little bit of legwork. You gotta like really stay on the ball. It's almost like a, you gotta have a part-time job you gotta, you gotta have a part-time job just looking up PlayStation, uh, you know, updates and, and drops at different stores. It's definitely taking a lot of time. And uh, thanks for everybody who joined me. Uh, like I said, back Cobalt, follow Cobalt, and uh, I think it's just Tail End Studios on Twitter. So do all those things. Uh, it was really cool to see everything and get the, the word from them directly today. So, uh, you know, for me, that's my favorite part, like getting the the behind the scenes talk, uh, dude, he's got such a kind of heart, uh, for this particular story and something that deals with, you know, bionic. He's got a, he's got a, 
I don't want to say it. It's a bad pun, a, a hand in the game, I guess. <laughs> but he's definitely enjoying uh, putting out the book. And I can think that's the most important part. So go help out Tail End. Go back Cobalt. Uh, if you haven't checked out Star Circuit, go check that out. Um, I don't imagine anybody has missed by this point. Uh, and Marvin Wynn, we're going to get you on later on when you launch uh, The Edge. And we'll get you on Art Bros as well. So that's going to be fun. <clears throat> Everyone, have a good day. I'm going to go work. I'm going to go have fun. I'm getting over a sickness, so maybe I'll have a normal day instead of, you know, <laughs> the usual uh, crappy, um, you know, the sick days. I have a sick, sick weekend last weekend, and hopefully not a sick weekend this weekend. All right, peace out, everybody. I'll see you Wednesday with Art Bros. Uh, make sure you go support some indie books. I appreciate it. Peace out.